What's up, Hyper Fast Nation? On this episode of the Hyper Fast Wealth Show, I sat down and talked to a real estate investor who made $50 million only to lose it in 2008, has since recovered by investing in multifamily and now teaches hundreds and thousands of people through social media and in-person boot camps on how to do it themselves. His students own several hundred thousand units Welcome to the show, Rod Clife. All right, welcome to the show today, Rod. How are you doing? Oh, I'm awesome, brother. Let's have some fun today. I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, I'm excited to talk to you. You've got an amazing story, making $50 million, then losing it, and then getting it back again and then some. And I know you just came back from St. Bart's uh, late yesterday, hopefully having some good uh, time in the sun down there. So thank you for joining us today. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really looking forward to having some fun with you today, bro. Well, let's, let's just jump right into it uh, and tell our listeners how you got started in real estate, how you made $50 million and, and and then how you lost it. it must sure. Sure. Well, sure. I, I know you've got a lot of agents and brokers on your show. And I was actually, I was actually, well, actually, let me back up because I'll, I'll, I'll lead into this. So, you know, um, uh, I immigrated this country when I was six years old with my brother, mm. Albert, my mother's Vancha. I was born in the Netherlands, you know, wooden shoes, windmills, Holland. And we ended up in Denver, Colorado. And we really struggled initially. In fact, you know, I remember uh, eating expired food and and we drank powdered milk with our cereal in the morning because it was cheaper than real milk. And I wore clothes in the Goodwill and the Salvation Army really all the way through junior high school till I got a job at Burger King lying about my age when I was 14 so I could buy my own clothes. And, you know, and I'm sure you've got listeners that may have had it harder than we did. But, you know, I knew I wanted more. And luckily, my mom had an incredible work ethic. And she actually babysat kids so that we'd have enough money to eat. And... She was a bit of an entrepreneur with her babysitting money. She invested uh, in, in the stock market successfully and also invested in real estate. And her first real estate acquisition was the house right across the street from us. When I was 14, she paid about $30,000. And then when I was 17, a couple years later, she told me she'd made $20,000 in her sleep. I'm like, what? Mm. You made 20 grand? You didn't do anything? Screw college. I'm getting into real estate. So I went and got my real estate broker's license right when I turned 18, which you could do back then. This is 1978. They got smart. Now you need some experience. But I just did it with education. And I was a broker right when I turned 18. Well, my first year in real estate, I made about eight grand. My second year, maybe 10 grand. But my third year, I made over $100,000. So, you know, what happened between year two and year three that caused me to 10x my income? Well, what happened was I met a guy that taught me about the importance of mindset and psychology and how really 80 to 90 percent of your success in anything is just that your mindset and your psychology you know only 10 to 20 percent is the mechanical information um, and and so you know fast forward to today I've owned a couple thousand houses that I've rented long term uh, I own thousands of apartment units in 2006 my net worth went up 17 million dollars while I slept and you might be like, wow. And I was like, wow. You know, it's about $8,300 an hour uh, over the year. And, and, you know, and I thought I was a freaking real estate god. You know, I, I got a head so big I could barely fit it through a door. And, you know, when that happens, God of the universe will mm. give you a nice little smack. Mm. Well, that was 2008. I lost $50 million in 2008 conservatively. And, and so what I'm known for on my podcast and, you know, my, my, my boot camps – um, is talking about the mindset it took to have 50 million to lose in the first place, and then probably as importantly or more importantly even uh, the mindset it took to recover from that. And um, and so yeah, we can absolutely talk about that if you like, Dan. Well, let's talk about how you 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 got there. Um, mm -hmm. I'm guessing you know you sure. owned a lot of these long-term rentals, and prices went up mm -hmm. in the mid 2000s, and um, mm -hmm. and then it was gone. Do you, do you think there was something you could have done differently or seen back then that would have prevented that sure. or like a lesson learned sure, or, were, sure. or were you just not ready for that kind of net worth? No, no, that's not it. No, I, I'd been doing it my whole life, but, but uh, really, and, and everybody's like, Oh, you were over leveraged. No, I was at a 30% loan to value. I only owed mm. 30 cents on the dollar. Um, and, and here's what, what caused me to crash. So I had, I had 800 houses uh, and several apartment complexes. But the 800 houses were two hours north of me, two hours south of me, and everywhere in between along the Gulf Coast of Florida. And so here's, a, here's, a, here's some things that, that 
that impacted that. Number one is Florida has no state income tax, so property taxes are proportionally higher, which impact what? Cash flow. Um, I had properties in wind and flood zones, so higher insurance, which impact cash flow. But what really killed me is these were mostly C-class houses. By the way, it was the houses that pulled me down. If I hadn't cross-collateralized those with packages, with, with packages of houses with apartment buildings, I still own the apartment buildings. But anyway, so... Um, what killed me is these were C-class houses. So in a C-asset, you're going to have more maintenance. They're older, tougher demographic, so lots of maintenance. And I'm, uh, you know, if I send someone to one of my apartment complexes, everything's the same. Uh, you know, the, the appliance parts are the same, the HVAC parts, plumbing parts, electrical, you know, fixtures. So you can stockpile parts, and they can be in and out in an hour. Well, if I had to send them to a house, and that's an hour, hour and a half away, one way, let's say, then they have to go see what's wrong, go find a Home Depot or a Lowe's where we have an account. And I don't know about you, but when Rod's happy ass tries to fix something at his house, he goes back to Home Depot more than once, and that's the same <laughs> with a maintenance guy. And so, you know, what took an hour at one of my apartment complexes took all day very often at one of these 800 houses, and again, the, and, so, and lots of that maintenance. So that really killed me. But then the coup de grace really was... You know, I didn't pay attention to demographics back then. If someone had a good job, they had income, I let them rent the place. Well, come to find out, a lot of my tenants were, con were like jobbers, contractors, plumbers, electricians, drywallers, painters, roofers, which fell off a freaking cliff in 08 and 09. They didn't have work. And so that was kind of like the final straw. And then what's really crazy is, um, and now, of course, I pay attention to that. In fact, we just we bought a 296-unit asset in San Antonio, and I literally looked where every single person worked to gauge recession resistance because I believe we're heading into a recession here. Not something to be afraid of, something to get excited about, actually. But but the point is I, I, I didn't do that then. Mm. And, but, um, you know, what's crazy is my portfolio actually, actually went upside down. I'd actually dropped more than 70% here in Florida, and that's, you know, and I, wow. I finally just threw in the towel. I couldn't hold it together. I hate it because I'd love to have those houses now, but, but uh, you know, but anyway, um, you know, and it sucked for a few months. I mean, I was hiding under a rock, and, you know, it was no fun. But, but um, you know, again, I, I've, I've always had... Uh, I've been exposed to a lot of mindset and psychology training. I spent 20 years following Tony Robbins around the planet, and I, you know, and back then when I when I transitioned, I told you about the guy I met as well in advance of that, and uh, and that's really what it took to to recover and 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 to get there. So, well, and, and that on the recovery, I mean, there's so many points we can dig into from mm -hmm. this, but on the recovery and, and getting back to, you know, that type of net worth and cash flow and all that did you did you just exclusively focus on multifamily yes yeah when i when i looked back on it i uh you know i realized that my multifamily survived no problem in mm. fact nationally multifamily only pulled back about 11 percent in in cash flow uh and i mean in in revenue and and i could have easily survived like i said if i hadn't cross collateralized it was the houses that pulled me down so you know, I, I got back when I got back, started thinking about getting back into real estate right after the crash. I formed this litigation support company and helped people save their homes. And it was really good business. We saved thousands of families homes. I sold it a few years ago. But um, when I decided to get back into real estate, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do commercial. And so I started a podcast. It's called Lifetime Cashflow. I'm just I'm blessed to say we just broke 13 million downloads. It's the largest commercial real estate podcast oh, wow. in the world. And yeah, thanks. And 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 um you know, my focus was multifamily and, and, but really the reason that the podcast has been so successful is I also focus on mindset. You know, I do a clip every week called own your power, you know, and if you're listening and you give me five minutes a week, I will juice you. There's hundreds of them there. There's music. I'm really proud of them. You know, there's just about every possible mindset strategy that I can think of, um, that I talk about. Um, but, but anyway, so yeah, that's, I started the podcast and, you know, now, you know, thousands of multifamily units later, um, and, and I teach multifamily now. I do. In fact, I've got a boot camp coming up the end of July. Um, uh, the only live event I do a year. It's in Denver. It's a three-day boot camp on you know, buying multifamily. And, and let me say this. If you're a broker or an agent and you're not investing for your own self, I mean, you don't have a re – very often you don't have any sort of retirement – you know, you know, if you get hit by a bus or you, you want to retire, there's nothing there for you. So if you're not taking advantage of buying assets – Big mistake, respectfully. And uh, so, you know, if you think multifamily might be a solution for you, I hope you'll come consider mm. coming to Denver. I'll, I'll give your peeps, by the way, I'll give a, a deal, 197 bucks, literally for three days, and it's not a sales pitch. So let me just tell you how to get the ticket. Uh, if you text my name, Rod, 
to 72345. But you got to remember this code. Use the code RODFRIEND because the price is more than that now. Just use the code RODFRIEND. You come for $197 for three days of training. Kind of a no-brainer. But and what's, um, What are the dates but, on that uh, again? The July 29th, 30th, and 31st. And just so you know, I go through every aspect of the business from, you know, building a team to finding deals to evaluating those deals, the due diligence, how to finance them, how to raise money, how to manage them, how to, you know, you name it. And I mean, it's drinking through a fire hose. I'm going to tell you that. Um, I've got, you know, several billion dollars represented by the panelists that will be on stage uh, every day, a couple of two or three times. And it's a lot of fun, you know, because I incorporate mindset as well. Uh, something I'm really proud of is not even my boot camp attendees, my students. I've, I've got a, a student base of coaching students, and they, I've been teaching a little over four years, and they own somewhere in the neighborhood of sixty to 70,000 units. And wow. I'm just you know, really super proud of that. You know, I suppose I'm most proud of that next to my kids. But, uh, but yeah, again, uh, just text my name, Rod, to 72345. Use the code RODFRIEND. I promise you'll be glad you came if you come. In fact, if you don't freaking love it, if you come, you ping me afterwards, I'll give you your money back. No questions asked. Never happened, but there's always a first time. But, again, I spend a lot of time on mindset, which is the reason I think that my students are so successful because, you know, you got to take action with what you learn. A lot of people have fear or they have limiting beliefs, you know, and, uh, or, or they're comfortable. Comfort zone's a nice warm place, and we all know nothing freaking grows there, right? So, you know, you've got to actually take action with what you learn. So, well, that's that sounds like an amazing event. And just speaking from experience, I know when whenever I go to events, uh, of course, you're going to learn a lot and, and how to get into multifamily. But you, you also you learn from people that attend it as well, and, and you oh, know, yeah. from from all Big their time. perspectives, and it motivates you and gets gets you inspired to to actually take action. And, um, you know, I, I can't, I can't say enough about the impact that live well, well, events like this have had on my life. The commercial, you know, the commercial real estate space is a team sport. Okay. And so, you know, it's not like residential real estate, single family, for example, you know, flipping, wholesaling, things like that. You can do that on your own. I mean, I bought those 2000 houses. I had my own company, but it's pretty much me. But, but multifamily, no way. It's a team sport. And so you got to network. I mean, and, and I facilitate that networking. I actually push it. So if you're an introvert, just know you're going to end up meeting some people because I make that happen at the event uh, to push you. But, um, but, yeah, it really is a team sport. And so that, those relationships are critical. That's, why the, that's the big advantage of live events uh, versus, like, versus like a virtual event. But, uh, but yeah, um, yeah. So, I mean, if you want to chat a little bit deeper about the mindset piece, let me know. Um, you know, that's kind of, that's, that's how, how people take action is, is tapping into that. Well, I'd, I'd like to circle back to, um, you know, comparing the recession of the mid two thousands to what may be starting okay. to happen okay. or, 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 you know, what, what do you think yeah, might be good. different this time about, um, Sure. The, the recession uh, as it applies to real estate and what what are you going to do and what are you advising other people do, to do to prepare for it? Hey, hold that thought. Do you want to get 100 tips for free from my best selling real estate book, The Hyper Local Hyper Fast Real Estate Agent? If you do, go to hyperfasttips.com and you can download 100 of my best tips today. Again, that's hyperfasttips.com. You can download a hundred tips on how to grow your business, get more clients, deliver more value to more people. Go to hyperfasttips.com. Great question. I'm actually going to do a YouTube video on this here in the next week or two, but, um, I, I will tell you, uh, you know, this feels like 2006 and seven to me. I, it feels, I mean, the market has been frothing. Now the fed is absolutely going to cause a recession. It may have already started. I mean, and, 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 and again, it's not anything to fear, but, um, you know, they have to slow down inflation. Inflation is insane uh, right now. And, you know, look at, look at gas and food and everything else just going through the roof and the value of our dollar is just like plummeting. Uh, in fact, I'm in a lot of cash right now and it's killing me to have it in the bank yeah. right now. But the reason I'm in a lot of cash right now is in crisis, cash is king, okay? When you have cash and you're able to execute on deals, there will be exponential deals coming. And that's why you know, now it doesn't have to be your own cash. You could have access to cash uh, as well, you know, and, and be connected to p people with money and be pre-framing them to not be fearful when, when, you know, the quote unquote blood is running in the streets. But, you know, what's different about it? Well, so in 2008 and 2006, if you could fog a mirror, you could buy a house. 
I mean, the Wall Street, Wall Street was just, you know, pushing these, you know, these, these subprime loan products and anybody could buy a house back then. You could work at Wendy's and buy a hundred thousand dollar house. And, you know, so that's not the case now. Okay. But there are a lot of other things happening right now. I mean, we won't get started down the political rabbit hole, but this administration, it seems like it's hell bent on destroying this economy. And so, mm. so, you know, um, between inflation and, um, you know, rising prices um, and, and the fact that the Fed has said they're going to raise rates five more times, there's just no question we're going to have a massive pullback. And, you know, the, the real question is going to be, I mean, in fact, Jamie Dimon, uh, was mm. it, uh, CEO of Chase, just was quoted as saying there's a hurricane coming. It could be a big one or a little one. I mean, the head of Bank of America said we're definitely going to have a recession. The head of Fannie Mae says we're going to have a recession. I mean, these guys are pretty smart peeps, and, and they, they know what they're talking about. So, you know, uh, I, I think to not think it's going to happen is naive. Now, you know, some people are saying it shouldn't be too bad. I will tell you we have a lot of pent-up demand for housing. So, you know, I think we're $1.4 million housing units short in twenty. Uh, 23 is I think what I, 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 I I'm either this year or next year uh, that one it was 1.4 million I remember that's how many housing units were short so there's a pent-up demand there's also you know a lot of money that wants to be in real estate but of course you know all that's out the window when things start looking ugly so uh, it's really gonna be interesting interesting to see how how impactful it's going to be uh, like big money is saying it's going to be short-lived it's going to just mm. last a couple of years mm. it'll it won't be too bad unemployment is pretty low right now now it has slowed down i literally just read the wall street journal this morning and and hiring has has really slowed down and um and unemployment will likely start creeping up as as businesses lay off in anticipate i mean elon just said he's laying off 10 percent of his people so you know it it I think we're going to start seeing some layoffs, and that will impact things as well. Um, spending on things like uh, uh, items is, is slowing down, and, and I think will really slow down. But on the other flip side of that, spending on um, services like travel and, and, and hospitality actually is expected to go up. So, you know, it, it, it's, it'd be interesting to see how it all shakes out, but... Uh, and who knows, you know, if there's going to be a catalyst to make it even worse um, than than we anticipate. But um, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty in this world right now with with Ukraine and and other things that are happening. So anyway, yeah, there's there's uh, a ton of ton of things that are like factors that are out there that almost seem competing. You know, you have this recession and maybe less jobs, but then on the other hand, it's it's also hard to get people to work in some areas right. and industries, and then you know. Real estate right. could go down, but there's we need millions of more houses to be built to fill the current demand. So there, there's it's well, I'm, we're it's seeing pricing. To... They're calling it they're calling it price discovery. We're seeing that already. Yeah. I, I mean, we we were invest in final on an asset here in Sarasota about forty four million, and we could have gotten it after the interest rate went up for thirty eight, and we still backed out. It just the mm. interest rate just didn't make it have it make sense. So, you know, pricing that was, is that was on a multifamily deal already. That was a big multifamily deal here, yeah, uh, and, and we had another one in um, Knoxville. The same, 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 exact same thing. We ended up backing. Oh, Chattanooga. I'm sorry. It's, uh, we ended up backing out of that one as well. Um, yeah, I just heard Grant. Car I was on a clubhouse call with Grant Cardone. Uh, oh gosh, about, a, about three weeks ago, and he just backed out of four deals, even with deals he had money hard on. You know, non-refundable. Um, just in anticipation of exponential opportunity coming. And I believe, mm. I really believe there will be exponential opportunity. You know, um, I hope it's not as bad as 08 and 09. Part of me says that the other part of me kind of hopes it is because it'll be incredible opportunity, but I, I, there's no question there's going to be opportunity. And, and this is when the real money is made when there's a pullback like this exponential, you know, money. Uh, so what, what do you think the average, discount. average real estate agent or real estate investor what should they be doing to prepare? Well, I would tell on the real estate agent front, you know, I would become very knowledgeable about short sales and, and workouts uh, it, to, 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 you know, be able to capitalize on the foreclosures that are, that are already looming right now. Um, I, I, my business was a foreclosure related business and I sold it. Uh, you know, it, was, it had 60 employees, 10, it was about a $10 million company, and we helped people save their homes. And that business has just exploded, according to my friend that bought hmm. it. 
um, from me. So, you know, they're co- those are coming and they'll, they'll need to be workouts. They'll need to be short sales. And so I would tell a real estate agent to become really good at that at the very least. But more importantly, try to get access to cash so you can capitalize on some of these deals that will be there. Focus on cash flow. Don't talk to me about value. Just focus on cash flow. That's going to be the name of the game. But, you know, there's nothing else you can buy really that that's a better hedge against inflation than real estate because not only does the price of food go up the price of rents go up and and look at look at wages good lord i saw a sign in a mcdonald's in georgia i was buying some land up there uh and they were it was like 15.75 an hour at mcdonald's and i just heard you know like like there there are a lot of retailers that are at 18 dollars an hour now which is just mind-blowing to me because i was at i was at under four dollars an hour when i worked at burger king 40 years ago, but, but still, uh, the point is, you know, wages are definitely going up and rents are definitely going up. Hell, I've got, uh, you know, a property here in Sarasota that I could have bought. I backed out cause I could just couldn't do it. I met these six tenants. It was a sixplex. Rents were nine fifty. I could have raised them to nineteen fifty, and I just, uh, I, I, I couldn't do it. I, I, you know, and definitely someone bought it and is going to do it. And those four people, those six people are going to get moved out. But the point is that's how, how, mm. how, the rents are increasing. How we saw 20 to 22 percent rent increases in in quite a few markets in this country. Um, so, what yeah. do you, what do you think the average uh, investor should do in preparation? Should should they be looking for you know duplexes, quadplexes, smaller units that maybe they can do with their own cash, or should they be looking at bigger stuff that maybe well, they have to go out and raise funds for? Good question. So, so residential multifamily is two, three, four. You do, you know, mm-hmm. duplex, triplex, four, five, fourplex. And of course, there are some advantages there. The financing's fantastic, especially if you're going to move in. Um, but there are a lot of disadvantages as well. Not the least of which is you can't ramp the value like you can with a commercial multifamily asset. So, if it's five units or more, it's considered commercial multifamily, and the value is based on a multiple of the net income. It's called the net operating income, the NOI, and, and it's about 17 to $20 to $1. i will give you an example. That 296-unit asset I was telling you about in San Antonio. So my manager, uh, who's fantastic, toured all the units to, to check for fire safety. Like she, you have to check the dates on the fire extinguisher, stuff like that. She noticed there were 64 tenants that had pets we didn't know about. And so all 64 of those tenants are now paying an extra 20 bucks a month um, for those pets, plus a deposit and all that. That is a $400,000 instant increase in value, okay? Uh, well, another thing, uh, you know, uh, I'll give you another more extreme example. I've got an asset in um, a suburb of Dayton, Ohio. It's in Beaver Creek. and actually got destroyed by a tornado, 101 units. Uh, and all 101 families had to move. Luckily, nobody got killed. A couple got pretty badly injured, but they're okay. But anyway... Um, Place was destroyed. Well, not completely destroyed, but enough where a lot of the buildings had to be rebuilt. We got a six hundred and fifty dollar a month rent bump. Okay, mm-hmm. on a hundred and one units, that is a twelve million dollar increase in value. This is why I love this business. I mean, you're able to what's called force appreciation, where you go in, you add value, raise the rents, you increase the net income, and then you increase the value. You increase the value. And then you're able to, you know, give your investors their money back and 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 have cash flow. And so. You know, th- what I would say to your question is there's a lot of money looking for home right now, not for residential real estate. They're looking for commercial real estate. So, you know, if, if you come learn to come, come to my boot camp, for God's sakes, in the end of July, um, you'll know how to you'll learn how to do this. and You'll be ready for this. If you try to learn this once the recession really hits, it'll be too late. So if you can come to my boot camp, um, just just do. You, I, like I said, I promise you'll be glad you did. You'll, you'll know how to do this. You'll know how to raise the money. You'll know how to talk shop. You'll know how to evaluate deals and. And, and then, you know, close on those deals and, and you'll meet a ton of people that are doing it. Um, and, um, you know, and, and again, the stock market has just killed a ton of people. Don't, we won't even talk about cryptocurrency, <laughs> you, know, re, you know. And so, so the point is, you know, real estate is, a, is an absolutely safe harbor, particularly commercial multifamily. I just told you in the great crash of 08 and 09, it only pulled back about 11%. Uh, and I'll tell you this, within three years of that crash, Rents had exceeded 2006 levels. That's how fast it recovered. Okay, multifamily specifically, not other asset classes. And so, you know, it's just a fantastic asset class to invest in commercial multifamily, which is why I decided to focus on it. And that's my podcast is focused on it and, and I teach it. So, because I love it. But 
But if, if you can cash flow it, right? If you're buying for the cash flow, like you said earlier, all about cash flow. And, and not the yeah, value. All about cash flow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it doesn't... yeah. Don't tell me what you don't tell me what somebody paid for it, uh, you know, 20 years ago, and uh, you know what you can buy it for. I'll give you a great, great example. Actually, about an asset in Shreveport, uh, not a market I normally would have bought in, but uh, the seller paid six. Uh, so I'm sorry, seller paid 20 million 10 years ago. We bought it for 16 and a half, uh, and it was a absolute nightmare property. But we sold it for 28, you know, of, of, uh, a month ago, and so, um, you know, and and. Where was I going with that? Oh, again, but again, I, I, I don't use that analogy to value a property. It's all based on cash flow. So, you know, I get students to tell me, you know, um, what they can get a place for and what it originally had sold for, and, and you don't want to use that. It's because, it's, you, you know, it's all about uh, cash flowing, and, and, you know, and that's, what, that's how you get through a, a period like this because there will be a rent pullback. So there will be people don't pay their rent, so people that lose their jobs, so on and so forth. And, and so that's why cash flow is so critical. Hey, hold that thought for a minute. Do you want to take your real estate business to the next level? If you do, there's no reason to go it alone. Learn from people who've been where you want to go. Carrie and I have sold billions of dollars in real estate. We've netted over seven figures for seven years in a row now. And we want to see if you would be a good fit to work for us. We don't work with a lot of people but we wanna give you a chance to get on a free strategy call to see if we can help you get your business to the next level. Go to hyperfastcoach.com and apply for your discovery session today. Again, that's hyperfastcoach.com. One, one thing I've noticed, and maybe this is something you'll cover in the boot camp, but you've mentioned deals you've done in Georgia, Florida, Ohio, now Shreveport, Louisiana. How are you finding and evaluating deals in so many different yeah. places? Well, so, yeah, and I actually have assets in uh, uh, Cincinnati, in Indianapolis. I'm looking at my map here. We just sold our one in Lexington here in Sarasota, uh, Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina. We've got assets, you know, in, in multiple states. And, and you know, in, in what you'll learn at the boot camp, and, and I'm not, you know, plugging the loop. You could learn this elsewhere. You just, you're just basically learning it faster there. But, you know, you, you build relationships with brokers, and we teach you how to do that and what to say, what to do, and how to evaluate a deal. And I won't even go look at a deal unless I've got it locked up with a signed mm. letter of intent or a contract. I won't get in a plane to look because, you know, what we teach you is you, you can do so much of this homework in your underwear in front of a laptop, okay? You know, websites that you can use to check the demographics, to check the crime, to, uh, you know, really, uh, you know, Google Earth to, to evaluate, you know, drive down the street and, you know, you go to Street View and you go down, you go to the, look at the apartment complex and then you drive to the main intersection and if there's a, you know, a liquor store and a strip club and a pawn shop <laughs> on the corner, that's a clue, right? So, so, you know, you're able to do all that, you know, like I said, from your laptop. And so you can do a lot of homework right there. We teach you how to do all that. Um, and, and, and pick up the phone as well, obviously. You need to make some phone calls. But, but you don't have to physically be there, at least initially, to, to really check out a place. Now, then when you get there, of course, you're going to drive the area. You're going to see, you know, I want to see national retail tenants around it. You know, I don't want to see Bob's Burgers and Sushi. I want to see, you know, national burger chains and Starbucks and Whole Foods and all that stuff. You know, it gives you a really good indication of an, of a, of an area and, and – Again, we teach you how to do all that, but but I, I like that. I like that idea you just mentioned of of uh, looking for the Starbucks and Whole Foods. Not mm -hmm. that not that I think they're the the greatest thing or whatever, but you're letting big right. corporate um, they do their departments research. doing the research. Yes, and you're right. piggybacking off of that. Yeah, they do, and and even big even big national um, grocery stores they really do their demographical research, and so you're not you don't have to reinvent the wheel if you find an area a pocket of these these retailers and you're near it. You're good, you know. When they start moving out, then you need to sell, you know. But but if they're there, yeah, then then it's absolutely a plus. And and again, not that I don't like local retailers, but as it relates to the analysis process, you want to see the national ones. I get hate when I I post a, a clip from my boot camp where I talk about this, and I got hate that you know what about the local retailers that are getting pushed out? Yeah, okay, I agree with that, but. You know, they, those, those big ones do their homework. They spend a ton of money to do their homework. But, but so, so that's how. And then you build those relationships. You get a place locked up. And then you go visit it and really do your more detailed work. And then, you know, we teach you how to do the actual due diligence where you, you go into every unit, you know, and the things you want to look for and, and who you get help from and how you leverage that um, so you're not killing yourself when you've got a day or two to get through, you know, a bunch of units. And, 
you know, and again, how to build, how to build that team because it really is a team sport. And there's so many places you can do this business, commercial multifamily. You could be the one that finds the deals, builds the relationships with investors. You could be the one that underwrites the deal if you're, a, if you're analytical. You could be, if you're process driven, you could help with the asset management after, you know, you're going to hire a property management company, but you've got to manage that management company. It's called asset management. So there's a lot of areas that you can join a team and add value to a team. And I don't know about you, Dan, but I'll take 50, 20, 30, 40, 50% of something over 100% of nothing any day. So, you know, it's okay to, to partner up with people and, and do this business. And, and it's uh, very, it can be very, it, it is very, very lucrative. And, uh, and it's a lot of fun. So I agree. Well, Rod, this has been great. I always like to end with a hyper fast round. If you're ready for a couple rapid fire questions, you we bet. can start. All right. What's your biggest piece of advice to a new real estate investor? Education, bottom line, like I said, 197 bucks for my boot camp. You can go to YouTube University too, but you got to edu educate yourself. If you dabble, dabblers get their butts kicked. You know, don't be lazy. If you're going to invest in anything, learn it, including the stock market. You know, or even if you're going to invest passively, give someone else your money, like an, an operator in a syndication or something. Learn the business. If you want to invest passively, you belong at my boot camp because. You know, why would you give your hard-earned money to someone if you don't understand the basics of it at least? You know, so, so education for sure. All right. If you had to start over and all you could take with you is the knowledge you've gained, you couldn't take your reputation, your network, or your money, well, what would you do? Several things. Again, we didn't talk about mindset or psychology at all, and I really believe that's 80 to 90% of success in anything. So, And I spend a lot of time on that at the boot camp, by the way. The first hour is spent on clearly defining what your goals are, why you want them, so you create that burning desire. But that's the first thing I would do is tap into that burning desire, like Napoleon Hill talks about in his book, Think and Grow Rich. You've got to have that to push through fear, to push through limiting beliefs, to get uncomfortable. And, and, and you got to have that, that burning desire. So start there, get real clear on what you want and why you want it. Then decide what the vehicle is going to be. Is it going to be real estate? Is it going to be entrepreneurship? Whatever it is. And, and, and educate yourself in that vehicle. Okay, there are people that have done it before. The map is there. You just have to follow the map. There's no secret sauce to it. Um, and, 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 then, and then you, then you make a decision. And the Latin root for the word decision means to cut off. I mean, you're, you're going to attack the island. You're burning your ships because you're taking their damn ships home. And then you take massive freaking action. That's it. What, um, what's the biggest mistake you see experienced investors making? Well, the biggest one I just referenced was dabbling. I, I mean, mm. you need to learn the business, and, and it's, it's crazy for you not to. Um, but, you know, there are lots. Of, in fact, I wrote a book. If, if, if you go to rodslinks.com, rodslinks.com, there's a book there that's free, the 29 biggest mistakes I see investors make. And then one of them, again, is, is, is dabbling. Uh, being underfunded is another one. You know, trying to, trying to do your CapEx or your fix-up on the property from the cash flow is another one. You need to raise that money in advance. And there's, like I said, there's 29 of them. If you go to rodslinks.com, uh, you can download that free book. All right. When you're not working on your real estate business or teaching other people about real estate, what would we most likely find you doing? Well, I've, I've, I've got a philanthropic side. I have a, I have a foundation, uh, and uh, uh, we've fed 110,000 kids over the last 20 years. Um, we've done tens of thousands of backpacks filled with school supplies to local kids here. We've done tens of thousands of teddy bears to local police departments for their officers to keep in a vehicle if they encounter a child that's been traumatized so they can comfort that child. And, you know, I will tell you, there's a message in all that. And, um, you know, uh, it, it, there we've been taught to achieve to be happy. Like we can't be happy until we've achieved. But if you give back in any fashion, you're happily achieving. So, you know, you might be listening to this with blood dripping from your teeth. You know you want this so bad and you're like, okay, yeah, I'll give back when I have the money to give back. Big mistake. Give back right now. Find a cause that you're interested in. You know, Tony Robbins calls it the science of achievement versus the art of fulfillment. Achievement really is a science. If you want to learn multifamily real estate, for God's sakes, come to my boot camp. This, that's a no-brainer. But, but there's a map. There's no secret sauce. You just have to do it. So that's achievement. But fulfillment is an art. You've got to find something that juices you. You know, for me, it's kids. It could be the environment. It could be the elderly. It could be animals, whatever it is, and give back right now because then you'll be happily achieving. Okay, and I know that's a play on words, but I'm going to tell you, not only will you be happier, but and and fulfilled, but 
um, you'll, you'll, you'll get the success faster. That's the way God or the universe, whatever you believe mm. works, whatever you give, you get back a hundred, a hundred fold. So I would encourage you to figure out how to give back in some way, even if it's just your time, if you, if you want success, because again, you'll be fulfilled on that path. Unfortunately, right. I had to be 40 to get that memo, mm. but, uh, yeah. Oh, I, I love that. Last one. Uh, where do you see yourself 10 years from now? Oh, I was just talking to my wife about that on a plane back from St. Bart's last night. Uh, you know, that, you know, I, I, listen, I love work. Work is play. I mean, you can see on the wall behind me, there's some of the hundreds of thank you cards that I've gotten over the last few years. I literally, when I say, and this is not ego, when I tell you I get love every day, it's several times a day usually, people whose lives have been impacted. And so I love what I do, but I, I do need to slow down a little bit. In 10 years, I'll have slowed down. I and mean, we've got thousands of apartment units and, and, you know, uh, so, so that's a beautiful thing. And, and I do love teaching, so I'll be teaching, but I'll probably slow it down. That's all. And, 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 it, you know, I, I love work so much that I don't go out on my boat fishing enough or my jet skis or my canoes and, <laughs> and, 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 and just, you know, go, go shoot. I love shoot my guns and, 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 and all these things that I enjoy doing biking and things like that. So, you know, I, I told my wife, I do need to start really thinking about that, but, uh, I don't know if that answers your question, but that's awesome. Uh, no, it sounds like you got some yeah. great hobbies, great uh, phil philanthropic uh, causes that you support. So, you know, I love seeing what you've been able to uh, do because of real estate. Uh, this has been an amazing show, Rob. Before we sign off, if you want to tell people uh, again about the, the boot camp or how they can connect with you if they've got questions, uh, I'd love to have you no, take I appreciate a minute to do that. Yeah. I appreciate it. Th thank you very much. Uh, I mean, if you uh, if you're interested again in that boot camp, it's three days of training. It's 197 bucks with the code Rod Friend. It's truly a no brainer. Uh, it, you know, I, it's not a sales pitch. I, I mentioned my coaching for about 30 minutes. If you're interested, great. If not, you're going to leave with so much freaking value. It's overwhelming in some cases, like drinking through a fire hose about this business, but. You know, if there were ever a freaking time to learn this business, it's right now. If you're if you're going to, especially if you're a broker or an agent, for God's sakes, you can capitalize on this because you're seeing the deals before anybody else sees them. So, you know, I hope you'll come see me in Denver. Denver is United's hub. You can fly nonstop from just about anywhere. So, again, um, I hope you'll come and, and it, just text my name Rod to seven two three four five. And then just remember the code Rod Friend, so you get that 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 uh, 197. If you have any trouble, just DM me on any social channel. I'm very active. If you've got a question, feel free to DM me as well. And then if you really want, to, I don't want to overwhelm, but uh, if you go to RodsLinks.com, there's all my stuff there, all my social media links. Uh, I do a goal setting workshop of the first of the year that's really powerful. That's free. You can download. It's really powerful. That it's what I do at my event. Um, just a lot of free resources there, books and articles. And so again, that's Rod's links, but, uh, thanks for having me on Dan. It's been a lot of fun. Awesome, Rod. This has been great. I've, I've loved your story and, and, you know, just the motivation and, and the, the methods and, and, uh, your insights on the market today. So thank you very much. And to all of our listeners and viewers out there, thank you so much for tuning in. Please share this with other people that you think would benefit from watching it or listening to it. And we'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure and go to hyperfastagent.com to learn about upcoming in-person and online events. And don't forget to share this show with someone that you think could benefit from hearing it. And make sure you subscribe on YouTube or anywhere that you can find podcasts. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Hyper Fat Show. Subscribe to us if you want to make sure you get the latest and greatest Hyper Fat Shows. And remember, we love reviews. Reviews help us bring better and better guests and improve our shows. So give us the good, the bad, and the ugly. We hope you enjoyed the show, and we will see you next time. Hey guys, thanks for sticking around to the end. I hope you enjoyed that video, and if you want to see more, click right here. And if you want 100 real estate tips from my best-selling book, click right here to download them instantly. And if you're new to this channel, click below to subscribe.